the idea about this film came because uh, my father-in-law put a, a new door to his apartment, so when we came to visit uh, last Christmas, I opened the door, and then there was another door. And I said, what's the matter with these doors? You put a new one, but the old one is still there. And he said, yes, yeah, it was a mis kind of a mistake, but uh, we are going to leave both of them. And after a few hours, I started to think, oh, no, there is room enough inside the twin doors. What if a girl accidentally gets trapped in it? So I took my wife, put her inside, closed the door, and filmed, filmed her with a small handicam from the spy hole. And with standard definition, it already looked fine. So I said, what if I'm going to use proper cameras to do it? And uh, so I constructed the whole story. And the basic story actually comes to my mind from uh, something that I really like, that is the accidentally uh, event that leads you to horror. And they are not brought by huge alien invasions or uh, big uh, monsters or stupid robots beating the shit out of each other but it comes from normal life. So two doors and a broken handle can become a, a real nightmare. And my inspiration was the writings of Richard Madison, one of the greatest American writer about fantasy and uh, fantastic, and uh, Twilight Zone TV series of the 60s made by Rod Serling. And most of the episodes of the TV series were based on Richard Madison scripts and books. And to Madison, like, like to, King, to Stephen King later and Robert Bloch, those great, great writers, horror it comes from modern uh, contemporary life. And it's a metaphor to say how our contemporary life is wrong. And this movie, it's uh, of course a ex style exercise in filmmaking because my task was to show my skills as a director, stuck in a person in between two doors and try to film from many angles possible. And, uh, but it's also, uh, a light metaphor or the loss of communications between people. How this woman, just because there is a, a thick door and can't be reached and she can't reach the outside, uh, the, the, the thick door is a metaphor of this loss of communication between the people. We actually live close to each other, especially in other countries. I mean, uh, Macedonia is a very friendly country, but it's more friendly than other places also, uh, in which everybody knows each other. But in uh, other European countries, we are becoming more and more like the uh, US, I mean, uh, very selfish, uh, very opportunistic. And uh, this is kind of a metaphor about that, but it's also an exercise in uh, filmmaking. I've always liked taking photos. I don't think most people appreciate how amazing photos are, because not that long ago, everyone would have to draw um, a few you know, cave paintings, that sort of stuff, and they were never accurate. Um, I think before Renaissance, the perspective was all completely wrong. When photos came along, it's a combination of science and art, which I love because I can't draw. And for, with a camera, I can actually make a picture. Um, I can't draw one, but it's amazing. Aeroplanes and pictures are the most amazing things ever, and people just accept them. Everybody has a mobile phone with a camera on it. Everybody can get a, a, a camera like that, press a button, take moving pictures. And everybody thinks, oh, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a photographer, because I can take the picture. But obviously there's a bit more to it than that. And I enjoyed a bit more to it than that bit of it. So, doors. This is a man who came up with doors. And I was brought in to film it. Um, because, uh, well, long story, but contacts go back a long, long time. Um, Mariana Baino and blah, 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 and Ukraine and other films like that. So, doors basically is a short film, okay? That's a... A long time ago, when you went to cinema, you'd see two films. You'd see a, a, a short film and a long film. And the short film would be a great place for directors, new directors to try out their skills. And if the studio trusted them, they would give them a big film. Unfortunately, that system doesn't work anymore. So a director, stroke producer, stroke writer has to make their own short film, take it around festivals, and prove to, to people they, they are capable of making a feature film. So that's what Doors is. And one of the things I like about Doors is it is exactly that, it's a short film. It's not a feature film crammed into 10 minutes. It's actually pretty much one scene with one actress. It's simple, it's, it's all there. It's a complete beginning to end film with no pretenses. Um, we shot it very simply over a very short period of time, um, relatively small crew, 
limited, very, I mean, locations we could walk to them. I mean, that is so important. You know, we, we, I mean, we've got all this landscape here. He could have gone mad. He could have had a location 20 kilometers up there and we would never have got finished. But as it happened, we actually finished on time, on schedule. It all went, it all went well, didn't it? I mean, there was no problems. Everyone talks when they talk about, oh, there was terrible problems. There was, and um, we shot with, um, which is a very fashionable camera at the moment, 5D, which is a very nice camera. It's, it's affordable. It gives, sort of, as I was saying earlier, it, it gives a look which people are used to, which is the, the shallow depth of field. Um, that's a two-edged sword because, obviously, if the, the focus is too shallow, then the poor actress is out of focus and we have to shoot again. We had a very good local crew, we had, um, which was incredibly handy, of course, because it's very expensive to bring everybody in. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 there were no problems. It was a very straightforward, simple, from my point of view, very simple lighting because, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the film, but it's a girl trapped between two doors, hence, hence the title. Um, I do not have a great scope to do amazing lighting changes when a girl is <laughs> in a small area trapped. Basically, what it has to look like, that it, it's not lit. Um, but obviously you need light, but it has to look like the girl is trapped in a, in between two doors, at daytime or nighttime. So from my point of view, it's very simple, and I just hope that no one even thinks there was a camera there or any lighting going on, because that's the whole point. I act because I feel alive uh, on the stage and now in front of camera also, I really feel alive and I, it seems like it's my, I've, I know I've, I've, sa I've said that before, but it's like my natural environment. So um, sometimes um, during the applause and everything, I feel like that's, that's the place I should be in the moment. So that's enough for me. Uh, it's really funny how come in this time of uh, I don't know, you're having you know, mobile phones and everything and you think that you can, uh, you can reach everything in every moment but some, I don't know, some thing that, is, that seems so simple to you like, I don't know, being uh, stuck into an elevator or between two doors, you have no connection, that can, that can uh, ruin your life. In one minute you're here, and then in the other one you you become something, someone totally else because of some thing that you don't even think that can be that can happen. Each film is a different experience. So you can be shooting a war film with lots of explosions and bangs, which is great fun, or you could be doing um, a, a drama set in a room where people have period costumes and they are drinking tea. Just a different approach, but they're all. Interesting. I think if you do the same thing all the time, you can get, not stuck in a rut, but it can get a little bit, everyone knows what's going to happen. Whereas if you're doing lots of, I mean, for instance, we could be doing a training film for a bar or something, but we still make it unique. So anything you do, you make it your own. But I think it's good to have a bit of variety. Although I do like action films because I like helicopters and aeroplanes and I do a lot of second unit with them you know, with Second World War aeroplanes, and it's really good fun. But even that, after a while, you think, actually, you know, I want to do some nice lighting. So I'm sure it's the same with you. You, you, you think, oh, maybe next time I'll do something a bit different. Okay. Uh, it was easy to work with Michele, in a sense, because uh, as a director, he, he had uh, all images, like, you know, in a sense of editing in his head. He knows what he wants. So it's easy to work with directors like him because you know you you saving time, you saving the crew, you know, with that method of working. So it was easy, and I think that the, at the end, like a movie product, will be very nice. I think that it's something that really fascinated me. It's uh, I, I'm not claustrophobic, but it's uh, something that really fascinated me to put someone in a tight place and could spy his reaction or a reaction from different point of views. At the point of view of a spy hole, it's the perfect metaphor for wireism because actually spy holes are even called the peephole from which you spy. When you spy a naked beautiful woman from the key door, something like that. So 
it's a little bit also even uh, about uh, wireism. And I think uh, it's going to come good. I hope so.